So the very basic uh, method of varying geometry, varying the color of geometry in Houdini is something that uh, most people learn pretty early on, so I'm going to skate over it uh, quite quickly. And what we've got here is <clears throat> a scene where we've got this sort of draw front, uh, and what I've done is I'm copying it to the points of this uh, grid that's coming in here, and this creates this array of drawers. And what I want is to achieve the effect you're seeing here, which is that each drawer has a different color. And let me just recreate this. So the way to do this is to create attributes. So all we've got here are some points. It's being copied to the points of this grid. So if we can create some point attributes here, if we create the right point attributes, then that will be taken account of in the rendering. So let's uh, do that. And the first thing uh, you want to do is create an attribute. Uh, there are actually many ways to, to do what I'm about to do, but this is this is one of the easiest. So we'll call this attribute seed, like so. And we want to give it a, a value which is different for each point in this grid. So the way to do that using an expression is rand $pt. Uh, $pt is the point number, and rand takes uh, creates a random value based on what's uh, the, 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 the function there. So if we have a look at our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that for each point that, that value of seed is different. So that gives us just a number between 0 and 1, and we need a color. Uh, what we could do is write a, a special shader which read this attribute and then use that to generate a random color. Uh, instead, uh, what I'm going to do is create that color attribute actually on the geometry. So I'm going to do that using a color sop. So let's put that there. And the form of the color sop we want is ramp from attribute. And this allows us, it's very useful because it allows us to define the range of colors we want. So uh, in this case, let's enlarge this. Let's say I'm going to start with a red color at one end and a yellow color at the other. And what this is going to do is it's going to pick randomly from this whole range of colors that we've defined, defined here. And it's going to do so based on that attribute that I created, which I called seed. So if I put that in there, what we should now find is that there's a random color attribute here, which is varying between each of those, over each of those points. Now, by default, if I just lay down an ordinary copy sop here, let's just copy this again. Whoops, that's the points we're copying to. And that's the objects. So if we if we were to just lay down a copy sop like this, uh, we would find uh, that first of all, the drawers are being copied in the wrong way, and secondly, they're all the same color. Well, to fix the first of those, the the, the wrong transform, what you need to do is untick this transform using template point attributes. So if I untick that, all the drawers will turn the right way around, but they're still all the same color. And the way to change the color is by uh, changing things on this attribute tab. And by default, none of the attributes which you create on the points are copied over to this geometry that you're copying. So you need to change that. And if we tick this, actually the defaults allow you to do this. And the defaults really just copy every, uh, every attribute from your points onto the points of the of the geometry that you're copying. In fact, strictly speaking, it would be more efficient if we were to copy the CD value on the points to the primitives, uh, just a little bit more efficient. So this is this is the sort of perfect setup here. And as you can see, uh, we've now got a different color on each of our drawers, and this would be reflected if we render, providing we're using the right kind of uh, material and the material I've got assigned here. Just actually, I will just render this out so that we can see it. Uh, where are we? Camera one. This seems to be. It's not working for some reason. Uh, let me just have a look. Camera one. Render it out.
I suspect uh, we're using the wrong material. Ah, I see. We've not enabled that in the at the scene level, so it's, it's not got anything to render. So there we are. We can see that that is rendering properly. There's one point you need to bear in mind on the shader, which is that the shader has a a little tick box here saying use point color and it's this which is telling the shader to pick up that attribute that color attribute that we created so if we get rid of it you can see they all go back to being white okay so that's the the, the most basic uh, example of using variation uh, let's move on to something slightly more uh, difficult uh, which is texture variation and I'll just switch off the render for the moment so uh, what I've got here is I've got my my draw and let's have a look at it uh, and it's already got a texture applied let me have a look in the UV view and we can see that in the UV view we've got the sort of draw we've got the handle that's actually the back of the draw there uh, and when I apply a texture uh, just normally uh, what we would see is that uh, all of the drawers are getting the same texture. Let me just render this out and we can see. So they're all getting exactly the same texture. It's very obvious this is a computer generated image. How can we address that? Well, there are a couple of preliminary steps that you that you need to do uh, and you also need to have the right kind of texture. So we're we're object merging in our draw front and as I was showing you a moment ago uh, this changing to the UV view this has UVs defined on it now what we actually need for this to work is for this the area of these UVs to be much smaller so um, the, the transform is actually just needed to correct the way the drawers are being copied but I'm using a UV transform here and I'm scaling down my UVs as you can see here but the next thing I want to do is to make each copy of this draw have a different set of UVs and we can do this using a technique called copy stamping so let me just delete these two nodes and we'll set it up from scratch so the first uh, thing we need to do is set up our copy like so and the copy is going to copy the draw onto each of these points and I'm going to turn off transform using point attributes again and we can see we've now got the draw copied onto each of those points in order to get that draw to be different for each copy uh, and here we're not we're not just adding an attribute we're, we're actually going to try and change the nature of the object that's being copied up here different uh, variation for each copy we need to use the stamp tab so we can stamp the inputs and this is going to create <coughs> an attribute that's accessible from up here and um, which is going to be different for each point uh, for each copy and i'm going to create two different uh, stamp attributes the first will be u transform and I'm going to just set that to rand dollar pt. So that's going to be an attribute which is different for each uh, each copy. And then v transform. And I'm going to say rand dollar pt. And then you can just add any number you like to just to make it different, so that uh, the two are not the same. Oops, that's uh, I see that's. Like so. Uh, I've, I've just called these attributes. They're not, they're not really attributes. They're, they're things in the copy node which you can access using some special expressions up here. So let me lay down another UV transform. And this one is going to be the one that adds the variation. And I'm going to do that by using some expressions in here. And the expression that you need to use is stamp. And the first argument for the stamp 
is the node that you are going to grab the, the, the those stamp values from and that's obviously the copy node that we've just set up the uh, second uh, that seems to have, let me just enlarge this a bit easier right okay so uh, the second um, thing is the name of the attribute which in this case is u transform and then the third value you need is the default which I will put at zero okay and then uh, let's just see what the effect of that has been let's turn to our uh, so oops let's just see let me just check you transform ah I misspelled it it's u transform not uv transform so u transform and we can now see uh, that this is being spread out on the u direction each of these is having a different uh, value and now if I right click this copy the parameter paste uh, the expression and then instead of u transform here pick up the v transform we can see that we've now got a set of every every one of these is now is now different every every one of these uh, uv's is slightly different and because we've got our texture set up to wrap uh, it doesn't matter that these are outside the the box here these these will still work so because the, the the texture is a wrapping texture so if i have a look at my render view uh, and obviously i need to have the focus there on the copy node uh, we should see that each of these you can see each of these now has a different texture every one of the textures is different uh, another issue uh, that you sometimes come across is that the, the geometry that you've got is geometry that's been created elsewhere. So you're not creating this variation by copying things onto points, but you've got some model which has been brought in, which is which is uh, very varied, and you want to, to to assign different colors. And there's a very simple way to achieve this in Houdini. So let's have a look at this. What we've got here is a file which I'm bringing in uh, which I think we need to look through cam 1 maybe cam 2 cam 1 I thought um, anyway we've got uh, we've got some um, geometry coming in here which are some leaves and they've been created in a, in a they're actually uh, a part of a tree model that, that I downloaded uh, and we can see there's no attributes on these. There's nothing which would help us uh, to um, to make these leaves uh, vary in color. But we can use something called connectivity, and the connectivity SOP creates an attribute on the primitives, which by default is called class. And this attribute is the same for each set of primitives which are all connected. So if this model has been set up properly, all the primitives in each leaf will be connected to each other, but the primitives in separate leaves will not be connected to each other. So the class attribute should be different for each leaf. And if we have a look at the geometry spreadsheet, uh, we've got this attribute being put onto the primitives. We can see that that's indeed the case. Each of these is different. So we simply uh, use uh, our attribute create uh, creating our seed value and instead of uh, we're putting it on the primitive here and instead of randomizing based on the point number we randomize based on the class and then we add a color and the result is here and we can see we can see quite clearly I think let me see whether I can render these Uh, you can see reasonably clearly it, it's actually a bit hard to see but you'll have to take my word for it that each of those leaves now has a different color so the final aspect that I want to cover is actually the use of packed primitives 
Now, pet primitives is a very big subject. Uh, there's some training videos about it on the Houdini website, which I advise you to uh, to look at. Uh, but I'm going to look at uh, one particular aspect, which is this issue of how to vary the color across packed primitives. Uh, and the uh, the way we do that is a little more complicated than the other methods we've been using, uh, because we need to write a bespoke shader. But first of all, let's have a look at the setup. Um, so what I've got here uh, is I've got a grid. Let's have a look through the camera. So I've got a grid. I'm scattering some points on it. Uh, I'm then creating an attribute and I'm adding some color. So this is the same. In this case, I'm just using black and white. And this is, so this is the same method that I was using before. And then I've got my file that I'm bringing in as a packed primitive and then I'm copying it like so. So we've now got a, a packed primitive from the uh, from the disk being copied onto all of these points and because I've enabled use template point attributes uh, the the packed primitive points each have now a color we can see a different color. However, uh, when we render, and we need to find uh, cap two, when we render, uh, when we render, it works because I've already got the shader set up. So let's just uh, revert back to the basic clay shader. So if you just use a normal shader, uh, you can see that uh, all of the trees are the same. So that we're not getting any color variation, despite the fact that the points onto which those trees are being instanced by the renderer each have a different color attribute, but that's not being picked up. And the reason that's not being picked up is by default, uh, you can't access, the shader can't access that color attribute that we've created using the copy sop on each of the points to which the pack primitive is being uh, copied. Well, you could say, well, why don't we just stop using pack primitives? We can use the method we did before, but uh, this tree model is actually, I think, about 30 megabytes. So by the time you'd copied it onto each of these points, it's many hundreds of, of megabytes that are going to be used. It's, it would be very inefficient and very slow to try and create the geometry. Uh, the, the pack primitive is a very efficient way to handle these vast numbers of, of primitives. Uh, I think there are about uh, 200,000 polygons in each of these trees, so it's a huge amount of data. Uh, that you can't really handle unless you use pack primitives. So, uh, how do we go about creating a shader which can sort out this problem and that can look at this color attribute that we've created and then use it in rendering the trees? So, I've got one that I've created earlier here called clay packed, but why don't we, we start from scratch so you can see how it's done. So, let's take a, a clay shader and dive down and let me enlarge this so we can see now uh, what we should see is that we've got the surface model that's doing the shading and then you've got this thing called surface color which is the thing that's determining the color going into the surface model now if you're using the uh, one of the more complicated shaders in Houdini this will look different um, but the principle is the same so I hope if you if you see how I do this you can you can apply it to the other shaders so what we need to do is affect uh, the base color which is here so if I double click on this little node uh, you can see that it unhides this parameter that's coming in for the base color and what I need to do is multiply this by the color that we put onto the points onto which the pack primitives are being copied so how do we access that data well, the answer is that we need something oops, called a render state VOP. And the render state VOP is something that allows you to access various values that the renderer has access to. And we're going to access a vector value because it's a color, it's got three components. And the way to access the, the data on those uh, points is by using the prefix packed 
then colon, and then the name of whatever attribute it is that you've added to those points. And in this case, of course, it was capital C, small d, which is the Houdini name for the color attribute. And if I then add this value into here, it's going to multiply the base color by the color there, and that's going to go in and be combined with the colors that are already uh, on the geometry. So let's uh, see whether that works. Uh, so let's apply this shader to our object. Uh, where are we here? So I need to switch this to the one we've just created. And we can now see that each of those trees has a slightly different color. Well, I hope that's been a useful uh, quick run over how you can vary colors in Houdini. And I hope to look at some other uh, ways of creating variation in, in future lectures. Thanks very much for, for listening.